to the um, what do you call it? The grasshopper, the grasshopper library, right? So this is a very simple, uh, very similar example. Um, I have sliders from zero, zero to four here, and this this script where it does it, it saves every single iteration. Yeah. So this is using the uh, plugin called Colibri, which is part of the family TT box, uh, TT toolbox. So you can download it, and then you can download these things here. Uh, I don't know if uh, Spectacles comes with it or you have to download it as a third third party thing, but the TT uh, toolbox has the Colibri in it. Yeah. And basically what this does, it just gives me a way to save. So this is the aggregator. It gives me the folder location. So I'm telling it here to, uh, let me find the folder location when I, uh, oh here. So I'm, I'm specifying where to save all my data. Yeah. So my username desktop um the genome so the iteration so the specific iteration which is this and the image screenshot so this is what takes an image takes a screenshot of an image and the 3d object data so this is the json data here so if i let me let me see if this works so if i bring this here to unnamed paste okay so uh OK, uh, so which, you know, actually, maybe it's just better to start all over again. So let's let's I have already have the Colibri uh, plugin installed. Uh, I don't know if you have, but uh, we only use these components, right? So I'm just copying from here to show you. So uh, Colibri, this is again just the way for me to to save the parameters. So if I go here. Um, Take the parameters. So these are my parameters, uh, which are. I just have one parameter now, which is the uh, volume. So this, so this is my parameter. Remember, this is the <coughs> the volume output, right? So this is my parameter here. The aggregator. I'll just aggregator here uh, requires the genome. Wait. So uh, requires the uh, phenome. So here, this is basically just an ID. Yeah. Um, the iteration genome. So if I go to the iteration genome, you can see all these analogies come from uh, biology, right? So here, which is the iterator. Every iterator. And then from the iterator, I just need to give it the inputs. And this basically well, I really, I really don't need the iterator, don't I? Because I have the um, Galapagos. So ignore this one. So I'll just give it uh, the genome, which is this. Wait, is that the genome? Mm. OK, actually, I think I need to use it. Oh, I have so many. Yeah, 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 I have to save all this. OK, so ignore this for now, just because I need to do a bit of work, but I'll show you how to, to do it here, which is uh, already kind of done, right? I don't want you just to stare. So I have I have a um, I have a box. Yeah, and I have just three sliders. The other one has a lot of sliders, so it'll take it took me a lot of time to just uh, link them. So I have a box, all the sliders. Um, and then this is the aggregator. So this 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 is a uh, ladybug uh, component it's called fly. And if I turn this on, let me turn this off first. Oh, sorry, off. If I turn this on, you can see uh, it's just saying three siders, 64 iterations will be done. And I just like yes. And basically what this does is similar to Galapagos, but it doesn't give me any output. It just iterates through all the sliders, right? So again, if I just click it or just iterate through all the sliders. Yeah. So instead of this, I can actually use the Galapagos uh, plugin. But anyway, uh, what this does, it just cr creates the um, creates my iteration, which is the box here. Yeah. Takes the data, which is the value from the iteration. So it's volume, the area, and then using this plugin, I can aggregate everything together. So at the moment, it's off. And if you go on the desktop. Uh, 
So if I go here, uh, where is it? Desktop. You can see I haven't got a file called uh, I haven't got a file called Calibri. So I'm gonna just create one. Uh, let me make sure I spell it right. So yeah, Calibri. So uh, desktop. Sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, just click here. So I've just created a file. Um, yeah, a file called Colibri, right? Because I want to save all my data uh, here. And once I turn this on, you can see that it's already starting to save stuff. So um, if I go on desktop, Colibri, you can see it's already created a CSV file. So CSV is a uh, means comma separated value file basically it's a it's a spreadsheet yeah with a, a x and y uh well not necessarily x and y but it takes values and just separates them so it's creating my my file for me ready for me to iterate yeah uh and again this this saves the image and i'm saving it with a just a unique identifier here yeah? so i'm just saving the image with width and height of uh of 600. And then once I iterate through again, rather than use this, I can use the uh, Galapagos plugin. If you actually download the TT toolbox, they already have the sample files in there and they already show you how to do it in Galapagos. So you can download it and open the sample file and then you can see how they do it in the Galapagos, right? So here I'm iterating through all my possible variations. And what this plugin does, it automatically saves uh, my data, right? So if I go here, you can see uh, it's automatically saving, right? So I have 129 items here. Oh, it's already finished. Yep. So I have 129 items, and you can actually see see the different uh, iterations, right? I'm just saving saving it as an image here, and it's also exporting this JSON object. If you double click, it's just a way to structure data. So it's telling it's telling me that there's a geometry. Uh, vertices this 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 is used basically to create your uh, 3d model in your browser yeah so once once all this is saved all i have to do is upload this to google drive my google drive like what i've done here yeah just upload it make sure the google drive is public and then i can go on get data uh, just copy the link for my google drive Data, load data here. Uh, close, and I already have the data loaded, right? So you can see these images are the images I exported. That's why they're here. And if I want the 3D, 3D object, I mean that's not very easy to use. But that that's how the JSON. That's what the JSON object does. It makes me generate the, allows me to generate the 3D object here. So this is something you can include in your portfolio, for you know, and you can actually use the slider. So similar to what we discussed earlier, um, Kareem. See, X, Y, Z, volume, area, total length. So you can see it's a similar thing, and I can actually narrow it down based on my input here. So what I'm telling here is only give me the solutions where there's a three and a two Y, and th these are the solutions that I'm going. So another way for you to visualize the design space, if you like, yeah? Yeah, can I can I take this moment just to ask uh, to ask another question? Earlier, you showed um, an alternative way of viewing our models uh, via browser, um, and I I didn't make the I didn't manage to note down the the website uh, during that moment. Is this one? Is this one Design Explorer? Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah, if you Google Design Explorer, uh, yeah. let's let's just Design Explorer. So the yeah, developer yeah. of this thing, he's the same developer as the uh the same developer as this toolbox so that's why he's designed these components for you to export things easily right okay uh so all he's asking is, is like this will export every all your images all the data in a structured way and you just have to uh upload it so this is the if i go on design explorer this is the um this is just an example right so i think with weaver bird or something but you can see these are all the different iterations yeah here and then you can just look through them here or yeah yeah 
of the data. So again, just a way to visualize some of the iterations. You can choose to use this if you want. I mean, this gives you a very nice way to already export some of some images into your portfolio. Yeah, it also looks rather user friendly compared to just raw grasshopper. Exactly. Yeah. Again, they use they use this with Galapagos because Galapagos hasn't got these functions where you can visualize. But you can see it's very it's very um, very interesting, and you can see all these different uh, populations if you like, right? Yeah. And is this all? Is this all running off like an like a, a server, or is this powered by the like the hardware of your computer? So, so Design Explorer is is basically a um, an HTML. So basically a browser, and all it's doing is accessing um, data from somewhere else. Yeah. So here, because I've given it. So in my case. I'm yeah, there. you've given it like source files. Exactly. So from the cloud, or you can upload. I prefer this one because it's easier to do. This one you have to do a different kind of. Uh, data structure, but you can just load here. And they're not really getting the data. It's just the way for you to look at it, right? Again, you can see he's he's already stylized the images much better than I have because I didn't get enough time. But you can export it. So rather than just having it like this with a white background, you can actually stylize it in a different way. Yeah? Yeah. This image here, stylize it, and then you can export. So rather than having something just like this, you can actually go on. Uh, uh, swatch. Uh, okay. Let's uh, the surface stream display. Uh, display preview. Uh, custom preview here. I can I can get rid of this grid if I want, or I can just go here. Oh. So just this is a way for me to display things in a different way, right? So here you can see it's white, and I can change it to a different color if I want. And you can do this for each building component or whatever component that you have. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I can do it in whatever display it in whatever way I want, uh, and then just export it. Would we not be able to do that in Rhino in the layer options, or is this completely separate? No, no, a Grasshopper is, um, so you, you see, I can't select anything. It doesn't really technically exist in yeah. Rhino. It doesn't exist. Yeah, it's just projecting. Yeah, it's projecting. Well, well if I wanted to exist in Rhino, again, I have to uh, bake. Yeah, bake yeah. no, no, that, that's that's what I'm, I'm saying. Like, so if, if we were to bake, it could be not just, instead of using a, what was it, color swatch or color, I can't remember the the node that you used, but yep. we'll bake it, and then can we not just change the layers in in Rhino, the the layer colors in Rhino? Or? Uh, you can. So, uh, okay, okay. So let me see. So, the another plugin called um, Lunchbox. Okay, so let me try to. It's been a while since I used this. Uh, Okay, object pick. So what I can do instead is because remember, um, it's, act it's, act uh, it's actually taking a screenshot of this, right? So I can turn this completely off. Preview off, uh, whatever, preview off. And I can actually before uh, big toggle. So before, um, before it actually takes the screenshot, I can bake the object, but then there'll be a. I think that'll cause you a lot of problems with time delays, right? Because it might take a while to bake. Yeah, something. yeah, yeah. But I, I, I would just stylize it in Grasshopper. But this, this okay. component is in, um, uh, in what do you call it? Uh, uh, Lunchbox. This component actually allows you, if you have iterations, to actually bake them all. Mm -hmm. So it has a big toggle. So let's say, whenever this changes, so it can be anything, right? So it can be. Uh, uh, this might not work. Genome, you know, this will work. Bake toggle. Ah, it's this, so it won't work. Um, so I value, no. I think this will work. Yeah, bake geometry object, geometries to bake. Layer, 
press up a break, object name. I can give it all, I can give it different object names as well. So here, I can give every object I bake. I oh, can... does this then separate every unique uh, surface or object in the Rhino, okay. in Rhino so that when you bake it, it's, it's exactly. pre-organized? So it can be in a completely different layer or I can give it a name or I can give it a different color. Oh. Yeah. So let, let me try this again. Hopefully this is not going to crash. So if I do this. Uh, OK, I'm, I'm not, I can't move any. Just, OK, so you can see here it's baked all these freaking boxes. Uh, yeah. Why can't I see them? Um, that might be a problem. Object selected. So it's created the layers, but it didn't bake the objects for some reason. I missed something. So let me delete those again. It's okay. I put you on the spot there, and it was a pretty, pretty uh, it's irrelevant. Six, point. Um, it's not object. It's not something uh, tricky or difficult. Um, Uh, big toggle that works. This works. Layer. Object name. Object color. Layer color. And string. User key. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe maybe this is the colors. Object color. Can I get rid of them? I mean, I've used this before, and maybe I'm just missing something, or I won't be able to use the bake toggle. I'm using it in the wrong way, but it, it works. You'll, you'll find example with all these plugins. The best thing is when you download them, they all have examples, and they can show you their functionalities. Yeah. This is not working for some reason. I'm, I'm not entirely sure why. Oh, oh no, sorry. No, this, you need to input like in bake that's the that's the graph up, yeah. What, what was that? Um, and just a bit bake toggle. Maybe you just need to input the true. But it is yeah, I've, yeah. I've done it here. It, I think it's actually baking because every time this changes, uh, this will trigger, right? Bake sort of. Yeah, should. Uh, and it's creating the layers, but it's not creating the geometry. So, mm, what, what is the requirement? Okay, maybe, maybe because the box. Ah, okay, yeah. So again, guys. Grasshopper, there's sometimes just strange peculiarities, right? So the way this component was designed is some sometimes you have data types that are very specific, like box. They're not very useful sometimes because you can just use breps. So breps is the more breps will kind of contain data related to volumes, right? Well, this one's a specific thing. When I put this here, it didn't recognize a box because that's not what they use it most of it. But brep is more popular, so you can see it's already baked here. So if I do that again. I have loads of boxes now coming up. There you are. Yeah, now I can turn all these off. And I can start just working with specific ones, yeah. So hopefully that, that's clear now. Yeah, no, no, a lot better. I, I do have another question, though, uh, based yeah, yeah, on that. So that um, why would we use boxes instead of breps ever then? Because uh, I can see the, uh, well, I, I yeah. OK, so your main. I'll just go on the params uh, geometry panel here. The main, so here there are some uh, some geometry types that are, you can think of them as um, uh, hybrids, or they they can work with other geometry types. So if you take a if you take a curve, for example, here. Why, why is this not working? 